I've been watching this movie, Metropolis, and it's fantastic. I, I've seen it before, but I was much younger, and I didn't make much sense of it, but it intrigued me, and I knew I'd come back to it. And now I want to bring it to you. I start from the supposition that the world is topsy-turvy, that things are all wrong, that the wrong people are in jail and the wrong people are out of jail, that the wrong people are in power and the wrong people are out of power, that the wealth is distributed in this country and the world in such a way as not simply to require small reform, but to require a drastic reallocation of wealth. I start from the supposition that we don't have to say too much about this because all we have to do is think about the state of the world today and realize that things are all upside down. Now, if you don't think, if you just listen to TV and read scholarly things, you actually begin to think that things are not so bad or that just little things are wrong. But you have to get a little detached and then come back and look at the world and you are horrified I still have rust on my hands from these locked factory gates because I had to press my hands on the bars of these gates every morning and all day and I operated by the clock and it does something to your spirit your soul and it's very well shown here and there's a lot uh, about this movie that rings true but it is kind of a sci-fi horror movie and that shouldn't be lost now some of the footage was lost um, and found uh, just a few decades ago and part of me thinks that maybe the so-called lost footage was censored and I don't doubt that the movie was made in 1927 but I am pretty sure parts of it are older and um, how that exactly is I'm not quite sure yet it's more of a sense or feeling I have but it's one of those feelings that I know is is right and, I, and it was adapted from a book but uh, that's not exactly what I'm talking about um, but there, there are a number of different versions that I've watched and um, I don't know if this video I'm making will even get to you guys but uh, I hope so because I'm I'm gonna uh, give my commentary and uh, but here's a piece just to let you know how good it is I've been watching you very closely now kiss me children.
children. Look, children. These are your brothers and sisters. And look here, masters. These are your brothers and sisters. Music! Get them out of here. You heard me. Get them out of here. Out. Come on. Out. Please leave. Look at me, Freda. We must clear this area. This way, please. Don't you want me, Freda? So that's from the version that has the um, the voiceovers, which is really nice. And I would suggest watching the movie without the voiceovers first and then enjoying the luxury of the the voiceovers and seeing how much they add they do a really great job um and the reason i say that is visually the movie is a lot to take in and um having the voiceovers it kind of um it it leaves a little bit less it kind of forces the timing and um, it would might be it might become it might put you into the beta waves you know where you're just absorbing what's coming at you and it's not making any kind of an impact because you're not really thinking about it um, and then in the original like there's different versions where they've kind of restored it with computer graphics and, and things like that which makes it it cleans it up and makes it look better um, but a lot of the footage that I watched I mean uh, and took screenshots from that I'm presenting here is from the one that's just pretty raw. It's just like, okay, slightly restored, um, just cleaned up a little bit kind of physically, and then they just laid it out in its raw form, you know, and then others can, you know, Photoshop or colorize or whatever they want to do to kind of make it crisper. But, um, but I watched this just to see like, okay, what, what, what's it really, really like? Now, there are a lot of scenes here where they show, like he said, you, you know, Father, you're the brain of the city. And, and clearly the man indicates, you know, he doesn't deny that he built the city, but he doesn't exactly owe up, own up to having actually built it. And I'm wondering, you know, if you look at, like, they have the city angled to the right and it's very, yes, I know it's like Art Nouveau and, and, um, you know, expressionist and all this type of stuff, but, um, the way that they plastered on the cities, I think they're trying to obfuscate the fact that some of these buildings were actually what it was way back with the Technasmia and the, you know, the height of the Tatarian Empire or the Antediluvian people, you know, maybe their empire going way back. And look at the size of the doors. And uh, here he's doing the Masonic, you know, the hand. And there's just so, a whole lot of um, symbolism and imagery that... I think confuses the typical viewer as it did confuse me when I watched it um, many, many years ago. I think I was even a teenager. But um, I didn't forget about it. You know, it was, I think at the time, probably one of the oldest movies I'd ever watched. And I think we just were getting, you know, videos, getting started on getting videos, you know. And this was one of them that was available. So it's, it's like, you know, a matter of time before you watch it, right? Uh, and th that, that's back in the time where I could go to the library and, and rent the movies they had, borrow the movies that they had, and actually I was caught up. At one point I had watched every movie that they had. I can't do that anymore, but uh, I don't know if they, libraries have movies. But anyway, um, I haven't changed. I'm still trying to finish the internet. But um, they keep adding to it, you know, faster than I can consume it. But... <coughs> Anyway, um, so you have the people under the city, and 
uh, there are all kinds of layers uh, in this, and especially with in light of what we have just been learning, like with the mud flood and, the, and that type of stuff, it all comes up, um, every bit of it. Um, I'm impressed by the technology that they represent, although there's nothing new under the sun, and I see that more and more, um, you know, what might seem advanced uh, today is something they had in spades then, and then some of the things that they did ahead of the time then that would seem advanced then that we have today um, would equal equal that. So, excuse me, I'm it's very late, but I but I can crank out maybe another video. Now look at the numerology here, ninety nine seventy seven, and then this is the um, you know the the capitalist district you know where you go. Okay, so then there's this colorized version, and I. This one was kind of interesting because it wasn't so much colorized by human hand as it was by some kind of a computer software that they used. And it was kind of like a exhibition of the computer software. But if you look at the eyes, they are freak-o-rama. Now, the eyes are freaky on these actors, actresses. In the original kind of raw cut film, there's a lot of this, gosh, you know, reptilian looking lizard vertical slit eyeball stuff going on. And I do realize, yes, you know, the eyelashes, and you got the lighting on the sides and stuff. But if it doesn't look freaky, then I don't know. Um, creeps you out. And there's a lot of this stuff in this that does creep me out in a weird way. Because, um, like, this actress lady, uh, she can look very feminine. Oh, and then there's there's this... Uh, is this a reference to 1811? You know, did they add the thousand years to the 1811? And that's kind of like what the extra one is. You know, like... Oh, look, we just added another one, you know, like 1,000. Um, it's a Portman 2 or whatever you call it, where it's reverse forward, backward, down. But yeah, I threw in some of these freaky eyes here, like this guy's eyes ball bugging out. And, um, yeah, I watched the ver German version, too. Uh, this was like the second or third time I watched it uh, in the past, I don't know, four or five days. Um, but yeah, they talk about the Tower of Babel and, um, that there's a lot of, you know, dark occult, like satanic type imagery in here. And there's this Yoda look to her, you know, it's like, that. that's kind of this reptilian thing that goes on, you know, where I read somewhere that the Star Wars version of the Yoda which, well, I, excuse me, I'm, I'm extremely tired. I'm going to yawn, so just get used to it. Um, <laughs> but the Yoda was modeled after um, some thing, entity, or whatever. And George Lucas, because of his occult, occultic leanings and experiences, you know, whatever. That's neither here nor there, I guess. Um, just thought it was interesting, because just what I was talking about, that actress, um, she can look very beautiful, feminine. And then... Uh, it could just be her acting skills, but she can also, when she plays the horror of Babylon later on, and by the way, spoiler alert, there are going to be a lot of spoilers because I'm going through a synopsis of it, and hang on a second, my dog is snoring, and that's going to be the weirdest thing. Go on, go on. Now she's going to shake. Every time she gets down, she shakes. Stretch. And... Uh, shake. There it is. Okay. Back to business here. Um, but yeah, the, the lady, um, when she plays the horror of Babylon, slash android, slash witch, slash machine man, MM, like 33, um, the way she moves her body, and then even the, her physical shape and bone structure, it seems, uh, becomes very masculine in nature, and it kind of freaked me out, a little, weirded me out a little bit. Not to mention the eyes, you know. So anyway, um, the, I'm looking at the architecture and stuff like that, and it's very impressive everywhere. Um, now this footage, the stuff with the Thin Man, the so-called Thin Man, they got rid of a lot of that. See, uh, that, and that was what was recovered. Um, supposedly recovered uh, in like 1996 or something, I think it was. Um, 
so in this version you know it's not showing up now here she is now look at her and they did the makeup different and everything but but watch her body movements and everything and it's it must just be really great acting but did they use prosthetics on her face to kind of give it a different shape like a more bony i don't know it, it's it's strange that way you know just like this guy but um you have to you have to say that th these are German actors and actresses from, you know, the theater from a different era, and they were masters at their craft. But, oh man, those doors are unbelievable. Um, but if it, if it doesn't creep you out, then I don't know what, because we're not, they, they didn't have this kind of special effects. Um, and then like here in this, see all these things with the thin man, those were the, the lost, that's the lost footage. And I find it hard to believe that cut scene after cut scene that was lost was the thin man, you know? Yeah. And then these leering glances, cause it's the horror of Babylon now. And it's the way she moves her body. And then these guys' eyes look freaky and. You know, some of these eyes here, like the bottom left corner, is like going weird vertical slitty. And it's very close and clear in HD. And that is not a normal human pupil. And where have we seen that before? But in that one thing we saw with the uh, uh, guy talking about CRISPR and gene editing and becoming like gods. And so that, you know, we're talking almost a hundred years uh, from this film to the um, thing that uh, I saw recently with the guy and they show all these eyes and that some of them had this, you know, the pupil was definitely vertically oriented, pointed at the top and bottom. Now that stuff doesn't happen by accident. I, I know it can exist, but um, okay, so here things start to break down and this could be a representation of the fascists, you know, where the grim reaper comes and I don't show the scene cause I think of copyright, you know, I think it got busted out, uh, copy wronged or something just in that one scene for some reason. And it could be because he, the, the grim reaper swings the fascists around and, um, it commences the destruction, which includes the flood. Now they have these chambers with the waters and it reminded me of the book of Enoch and that they get disrupted and come out. And then here's the, the power, the heart of the city. And it's, if it isn't a ring of fire, like technasmia, you know, with your anode and cathode and when they arc across each other, like we've seen, um, when the transformers blow out, you know, in these recent events, some people think it's due weaponry and it could be just activating it, um, through microwave energy. But I think it's the arcing across it that really does it. Now I know they have safety protocols, but, uh, whatever the case, um, it's what they show here. So it seems like if it was the fascists doing the microwave energy, it would, cause the electrical grid to fail among other things you know the flooding um and then here they they are doing the transhuman thing and they have the you know this freakorama robot and they it's a woman but they call it the machine man okay so now the grim reaper has done the fascist thing and the water bubbles up as mud liquefaction right from from the, through the floor, through the, it makes cracks in the floor, and then the watery mud, you know, bubbles up through the bottom and begins to flood the city. And oh yeah, I'm trying not to show all that video. I'm just doing the commentary, you know. So then, um, <clears throat> that so that witch thing, it's kind of out of order because that android thing gets turned into the witch thing you know the devil android woman that can't be physically can't be discerned from the original and it, you know and i've speculated that some of our news reporters might be like that because 
how could they just sit there and just hold the line and lie day after day after day and, and they don't stop? You know, like, I know Anderson Cooper is a real person, right? But how, ma how many Anderson Coopers are there when he's on TV, you know, six, seven hours a day, it seems like? And he goes, I better get out there. The band can yes. teleport. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like he in the Middle East <laughs> reporting on something uh, live. Right, and then 10 minutes later, he's reporting live from a studio in New York. We're now saying 11 uh, people were killed in, in that blast, but we know 10 members of one family. Also, two media centers uh, built. Whoa. <laughs> well, that was a rather large explosion. Yeah. yeah. Um, that occurred, just look out here. Um, I can't actually see where the impact of that was. Uh, it's actually set off a number of car alarms, um, but that was probably the largest explosion that we've heard uh, just in the past, um, really in the past hour, there have been a number of explosions in the last hour or two, uh, but that one, the largest explosion close to the location of where we are. Whoa. Take him now, take him now, take him now, somebody take him now. You could take, I mean, it'd be crazy not to. He was... You know, I say, you know, why couldn't I have been born rich instead of so incredibly good looking? Well, he was born rich. Um, and I can't ask them to let me do this. I can't ask them to send me because there's probably insurance liability issues. Or do, do, do. Do, do. So I thought, OK, I just have to go and do so I just have to go to really dangerous places and go to places that other people don't want to go to or too scared to go to. And I have to get some really compelling stories. I've been working on the railroad on the I'm quitting. I'm going to go to wars. And I'm going to take a camera and I'm going to start shooting some stuff. I'm going to go to wars. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sneak into Burma and I'm going to hook up with some students fighting the Burmese government. <laughs> And even though you don't necessarily really care so much about what's going on in Burma, um, you know, it's not top of a lot of people's list at the time of, of stories. I, I'm going to, you know, it's going to be compelling because we're going to be focusing on young people and or I'm going to be focusing on young people. There was no we. I'm going to be focusing on young people. I'm going to tell the story of these kids in the jungles fighting this government. All the bosses I had at Channel One were saying you'll never be a correspondent. Um, and I'll, you know, for for a thousand dollars, you know, or whatever. And so they were like, sure, phony smiles and the bullshit conversations. It all um, gets... And nevertheless, I left and I snuck into Burma, hooked up some students fighting the Burmese government. I knew a guy who connected me with uh, a contact who put me in contact with, and there had been a, there were a group of students who had risen up in 1988 in, in Rangoon. It was typical. Summers in Rangoon, luge lessons. I recall the ABSDF, the All Burma Student Democratic Front. And so I met a woman in Thailand who I, I made a fake, and I said I was with Channel One, and it's the show scene. And she didn't really, you know, care too much. You know, there's not a lot of people showing up asking to do stories. So she put me in touch with a guy who then said, OK, be here at this, be on this band at such and such a day and such and such a time. and. I got smuggled in the back of a truck and then smuggled on a, in canoes. What is it? Burmese pirates. Marlon Brando. My mom hooked up with him. She did? With hot Marlon Brando, not like Apocalypse Now Marlon Brando. Don't talk. Oh, she, uh, she hooked up with like, uh, I think it was uh, on the waterfront Marlon Brando. Wow. She, she and Carol Mathau both watched the movie Lucky and lady. both made a yeah. deal that they were going to meet up. <laughs> did they really? Yeah, Carol You're did not it. kidding. Right? Carol got it first and then set it up for my mom. <laughs> it was a one night date. <laughs> Sit down. Nobody talks. Heads down. So all the kind of, all the, the fake stuff that we all, everybody deals with here on a daily basis. So. Um, so that's how I became a correspondent. I shot a story in Burma and Channel One aired it. But here it is, the Technasmia, it's, it's freaking out. You know, that's some pretty good footage. And then you have the blackout, and this is like 
this harkens back to the deluge, I think, but it also kind of seems to harken back to some of the, like, perhaps reset events or the the fall of the previous civilization um, post-flood. And um, now I haven't seen, I haven't seen all the footage. Uh, some of this stuff is the recovered stuff that makes it in one version or another you know the longest version doesn't necessarily have all the recovered footage it just depends on if the compiler was able to do that um but yeah so here that's the underground city that's getting flooded and i find it interesting like at the beginning of this video you saw the children and how they're all together all the time which is um, you know, they're separated from their parents. In, in the movie, the parents know about the children, but um, don't get to see them really much at all. They're just kind of being raised underground, which is very consistent with, like, the 1850s, you know, orphan trains and how we see in all those photographs big groups of children coming out from somewhere and just not looking really happy or like they know that much about the world at, at large and they just go right into a factory like no big deal you know um, but uh, so here you know the workers they kind of destroyed their own city because they're tricked by the witchy witchy woman evil woman and so now they're going to go get her. And, um, you know, the, this traffic jam, <laughs> it's, it's pretty amazing how accurate they are with those things. And so, you know, I'm skipping a lot of really important, great content. I guess, you know, the purpose of this wasn't to give you a comprehensive or representative representative synopsis as much as it was just to showcase the things I saw that I thought were very interesting in light of what we've learned the guy on the right looked looked like Obama's old security guard in this <laughs> strange anomaly photos and then her eyes in these things I mean I'm telling you Yes, uh, it's it's probably the lighting, but you know, it just could be that they were new at film, and they didn't know how not to light things properly, so people didn't look like they had big buggy lizard eyes, you know, because that wasn't a thing yet, I guess. But this architecture, you know, like in this shot, that could have been Cincinnati or. Uh, New York or some, you know, city like that could have been New York. There's, this is recovered lost footage because this thin man, they call him. Um, the, he just looked weird. And then some of these guys are given the lecherous looks at the, uh, Horror of Babylon, but man, if that guy in the foreground that in the previous picture didn't look freaky, and then this one they kind of blur it out, but his eyes just strange, strange. I'm telling you, all the way through this movie. You can go to family photos, you don't see that stuff, and then here, like, and I just did some screenshots and. This is where she's turning masculine and it had two faces. Like, not just the blur, motion blur, but it had two faces. And then here, this is supposed to be the Brigitte, and it, she looks male to me at that point. So did they substitute Brigitte with a male? Or what's going on there? Or is it just tremendous physical acting? I don't know. I don't know. But I, I do know the movie's... Very uh, stimulating and very good, and uh, it it was I thought it was mostly artsy and confusing when I watched it, 
you know, back in the 90s. But, um, yeah, it was this time based on everything I've, I've learned and shared with you on this channel. It was um, made a lot more sense to me and like with the Freemasons and everything like that. It was uh, quite a fascinating and enjoyable experience. And like I said, I would uh, recommend watching just like the raw version, even without the recovered segments. It's like it gets to be a long movie with the recovered segments. And in your first watch, you might not want to see every single scene because it does kind of like okay i get it because you're an experienced movie watcher you know it's not like the audience they made it for um and then the second watch i did you know uh it had the recovered scenes and it was very interesting for me to see what footage was lost and how specific and not random it was because it was like scene with this guy and then the scene in between they have it and then they lose it because it has this other guy in it again so and then after all that then to watch the colorized cleaned up edited down version with the dialogue that was refreshing excuse me refreshing and fun some yawning hiccups everything um so yeah there, I just thought I'd share that with you before I go to sleep. It's very late. It's very cold. It's very late. I'm very tired. And I did a lot of good hard work today. So, um, I'm going to leave you with some better imagery and uh, have a good one. Enjoy. Check it out. I will hopefully put all the links in the prescription. Thanks for watching UAP. Out.